Hi, I'm Scott Phillips of the American Wood Shop, and we're doing this with Popular Woodworking Magazine and their great staff and by Rycon. And this is how you get drift-free cuts on your bandsaw. First, get a good blade. And what's a good blade? One that costs more than 20 bucks with good steel in it. What's a universal blade on a bandsaw? Well, the one that I get more mileage out of is a quarter inch wide, six teeth per inch. Okay, now, once you get a good blade, here's what you need to know about tracking it on the tire so that you can tune it up. And I want you to see this. You adjust all the metal pieces, the roller bearings, well away from the blade. And this is the toolless blade guide system here where you can unlock the bearings, they're spring-loaded, and adjust everything away, especially the thrust bearing. You cannot track the blade properly if that thrust bearing is touching it. And it's already been released below the table. What you do above the table with the bearings, you do below the table as well. And now, to track the blade, you'll unlock the blade tracking knob, and if you want the blade to come forward, bring the knob towards you. If you want the blade to go back, you crank the knob away from you. And then, the very center of that blade needs to be on the very center of the top of that crown of that band on this wheel. Okay, that will make it stay there as you make the cut. Now I need to bring that forward just a hair. Be sure to lock it. If you do not lock it, the blade could walk one way or the other. So that's locked in. And now what I can do is adjust the bearings forward so that they are, the leading edge of that bearing is slightly behind the gullet and lock that in place. And I love these toolless adjustments on these Rikon bandsaws. These are absolutely phenomenal. Love it, love it, love it. Now you bring the thrust bearing forward and you don't want to press it hard into the blade. You want to bring it so it's just slightly behind the blade when it's at rest. A little bit of daylight is all you need. Some people like to put a wedge of paper in there, dollar bill, something like that. You don't have to. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to check it below the table as well. I've got, got to adjust that in ever so slightly. What's the number one way to get drift? Well, you can forget to adjust the thrust bearing to hold that blade on the center of the top of the tire, and then when you start to make a cut, what happens is the blade actually flexes back and you roll the set of the teeth right off with those side support bearings. So you destroy the blade. So you don't want to do that. It's very important to adjust it exactly the way I just said. Now let's talk about tensioning. With this guide column right here and the guard closed, everything's adjusted, four fingers up, lock the column. That's really important. Oh, the bandsaw is unplugged. You never touch a bit or a blade when the bandsaw is plugged in. Never. Okay, so on the tension, what I'm doing is four fingers up, column locked. I'm pressing on the side of that blade with the bandsaw unplugged and that blade should not flex more than a sixteenth of an inch. And if it does, you want to add more tension. Now this says on a quarter inch blade, it's actually set up on the scale here at three eighths of an inch. So you usually have to add a little bit more. And why is it that way? Well, it's because when they weld the blades up, the circumference of that weld can vary depending upon how many times they had to uh, hit that to weld it together to melt the metal. So it changes the circumference. So that's locked in place and that's good to go. But one final tip, make sure you use a bearing lubricant. Don't use WD-40. It's great for a lot of things, but not for lubricating bearings. I use bearing lubricant. You clean the surface of the bearing off thoroughly. Shake this, and that's key. Give it a three-second blast and let that dry for 10 minutes, and that's good to go for a month of action. And then the final tip is, at the end of the day, be sure to release the tension on the blade. That flexes now. And take a piece of scrap wood, set it in front of your blade so you don't come back a day or two later, fire it up without tensioning at first. You do all those things on your bandsaw and you too can have drift-free cuts.